All right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for a little more of what I've had to drink yesterday, and we're trying to cover all of the wine drinking events we have here at the Wine Watch, and trust me, it's a daunting task. I mean, I'm out drinking four or five nights a week, so we started covering some of them on uh, Delectable, an app on, for the iPhone. If you want to see, I'm taking live and real-time notes at a lot of these events I'm out at now and posting them up on Delectable if I can't get to... I'm finishing them here in the store sometimes. Anyways, the Oregon Pinot tasting has become an annual event. We had over 40 wines open on the table. Some great new stuff. Thank you for all the suppliers that came out. We're going to give you, our wine drinking people, one more chance to buy these wines, all of them, at the same price that we offered them at the Pinot Noir event here at the store. All right, well, we started out with, uh, well, I started out with Florent. He stopped by early, and let me give you guys a hint. If your suppliers come by early on the night of the tasting, now I will go ahead and Take some notes down on the wines that you're pouring that night because I can't really do it while the tasting's going on. It's just too busy here. We had 60 people here out in the courtyard. One of the last events we're going to be able to do out there. It gets a little bit too hot to be drinking wine, especially red wine outside uh, over the summer months here in South Florida. Well, Florida brought some really great stuff. This uh, Anne and Me wine, which, uh, well, this is their Cuvée A, which is their entry-level wine, 2011, a really forward and charming vintage from Oregon. This wine showing some lovely red cherry and strawberry-like fruit with some pretty floral notes. A little bit of spice here, really light, undergated, stated style. And started some tropical mango notes started to come out in this wine. Kind of really uh, cool. Fresh and bright on the tongue with that light red berry fruit uh, showing a short and pleasant finish. Notes of the brown spice. A very good little wine at $24.75. The Raptor Ridge Reserve up next. This is a 27 Acre Estate Vineyard in the Chehala Mountains. They make less than 700 cases of this wine. Like so many wineries in Oregon, I mean, they just don't make a lot of wine. I'm surprised we get a lot of these wines. This wine was a really nice minty kind of herbal note to the raspberry and red cherry fruit. Some smoky cola notes there as well. Nice complexity on the nose. A pretty wine on the palate. Soup, silky, uh, smooth tannins with good freshness. That mineral and floral note showing there on the finish along with its spice notes. A uh, little light, but not light in uh, complexity. Uh, just light in terms of uh, you know the fruit and the tannins of this wine. Very good though, at 33 bucks. The Eminent Domain. This wine showing some really nice richness, dark cherry and raspberry fruit on the nose. Hints of brown spice and all that mint also showing. Light and tangy redberry fruit on the tongue. Good amount of minerality on the finish. A really elegant style, but has some nice concentration and depth here also. Definitely the biggest of the wines so far. And uh, these guys, obviously, attorneys or something, eminent domain. Anyways, excellent juice, 45 bucks. The Alor uh, Pinot Noir from uh, Reservata from the Chehalin Mountains. You think these guys are Italian? Anyways, raspberry fruit, nice amount of pretty floral notes, some sweet cherry and brown spice showing. Uh, this 2010, a classic vintage in Oregon, a little more understated. Very fresh and elegant style. Uh, pretty spice and floral notes. That's only with some minerality showing at the end, some truffle, some earthy, uh, some spice, vanilla, and a little graphite in there as well. Very good stuff uh, at $49.50. And then the Breton Vineyards, uh, the guest out block, uh, which is some bacon fat, kind of smoky notes showing in the nose here, dark raspberry fruit, earthy, kind of an animal nuance there, and uh, really sweet and tangy though on the tongue, lovely red cherry pie fruit, nice amount of spice, and some tannin showing on the finish this one, but nicely balanced, good structure, excellent juice. And it should be at close to 50 bucks. And uh, the folks from Augustine, Port Domain Serene, Evanstadt Reserve, one of the greatest wineries in Oregon. Oh, 2008, a big, fat vintage. This wine showing really nicely here. One of my favorite wines, the Shale Halem Three Vineyards 2010, also on the table along with the Willa Kenzie Terra Boss 2010. These 2010s a little lighter, a little more savory vintage. The producers really like this vintage. 2011, even more so, but uh, very charming. The Vine Craft Table, uh, we just went through all those wines. Wines. We had the Florida Wine Company here with those Bergstrom wines, which these wines have changed dramatically in style. The Cumberland Reserve is a blend of all of the different single vineyards. They make this wine first, and then they bottle what's left in Shea, Gregory, and whatever single other single vineyards go into that. But these wines in 2010 showing, uh, to me, a little more complexity than the single vineyard wines from 2011, but could be because these wines are just so young and because they've changed the style of these wines. They're like 13% alcohol now. These used to be some of the biggest wines in Oregon, but now there's some of the more nuanced wines. This Shea and Gregory Ranch, both excellent wines in 2011. Just need a little bit of time. The Hayden Fig wine, a really light and savory wine. If you like that style of Pinot Noir, that was good. And then the Evan Shem Wood, Jay 
Pinot Noir, Cuvée J, rather. This is, they only make, you know, uh, we get seven cases of this wine in Florida. This wine showing some nice complexity here, some nice spice and nuance, and uh, one of the more highly sought after small bottlings in Oregon. Uh, really nice little wine at 41 bucks. All right, King Estate, the largest winery in Oregon representing tonight. And uh, the Acrobat, really a surprise for me. This wine, just really light and charming, really fresh, and a really great little example of an entry-level Oregon Pinot, under $16 a bottle. The Signature, always great from King Estate, really lovely balance uh, to this wine. Not maybe as big and fruity as uh, it had been in the past, but showing some lovely earthy tones. And then the Domain Wine, really a huge step up. You know, three distinctly different Pinot Noirs from this benchmark producer from uh, Oregon. All right, Pally Wine Company was on the tables. The Alphabets, from great little values for under 20 bucks. We've been selling the hell out of this wine. Really bright and fruity style. Lovely savoriness in this wine. Some nice spice in this as well. The Shea Vineyard, one of my favorite vineyards in all of Oregon. I really love the Shea wines. The Pally Shea 2010 needs a little bit of time, but really nice complexity here. And then the Montazi, this wine from 2008. Man, the 2008s were just rocking. This is a vintage that's really plump and ripe and uh, really easy to get into and like, and uh, especially for those people that like California Pinot. The Atticus wines were a big hit. Let me tell you, they just got better and better as the line went up here in terms of price. I don't know why that sometimes has a relevant... <laughs> you know, relationship to the value or the quality of a wine. But with this line, it seemed to the regular Atticus, a really nice little entry-level wine, some sweet cherry fruit, uh, really nice, but a short finish. The Select, uh, a little bit richer and a little bit more long in the finish. And then the Atticus Estate, um, the $46 version of this wine, all from 2009. You know, a little bigger vintage than 2010, but uh, really good wines. And uh, they showed really excellent. We sold all three of them. The Daedalus wine, unfortunately, this is the last of the Labyrinth. These guys have split up so and if you like this wine a collector's piece the 2009 vintage the la coutu the, the coat from uh le cadu uh this wine now really funky i mean a lot of people did not like this wine so in some vegetal notes but uh, I really thought it had a lot of character, a lot of depth, wonderful concentration, and uh, I've always liked this wine, small estate bottle wine, and uh, really great stuff. I thought just needed a little bit of time in the bottle as well as to open up the Erath wines. These wines, I mean, one of the uh, Dick Erath, one of the icons, one of the you know pioneers of Oregon wine industry. So it's good to see that they're carrying on the tradition here at Erath Winery, the 2011 entry level wine, a great example of entry level Pinot. I think uh, you know for eighteen dollars under. 19 bucks, one of the best values on the table. In that light and savory style, you look at these wines, they almost look like rosés. The 2011 Leyland, this wine really needs a little bit of time, as well as the Prince Hill. You know, like I said, this lighter, more savory style, in these 2011 and 10 vintages, these wines are going to need a little time to come out of their shell. The uh, Stakehold Table, some of the weirdest wines at the tasting. Albarino from Oregon. This one really pithy, and I mean, I really didn't enjoy it very much at all. The Tempranillo, I mean, kind of interesting to show someone that had a brown bag tasting. I mean, the wine wasn't bad, but I mean, especially at 1672, that actually was drinkable. But the real highlights on this table, man, the Jay Christopher wines, well, there was a lot of highlights. Sorry, Soder was a big highlight. The Mineral Springs, one of our favorite wines uh, from, um, from Oregon, along with the North Valley, probably our best-selling Pinot in the $30 price range the last few years. From the great Tony Soder, and then the Penner Ash. Man, this wine was a fruit bomb. A really big wine, one of the biggest Pinots of the night, only to be bested by the Christopher, especially for the price. This wine at 30 bucks, my pick for the wine of the night, or one of the wines of the night. Sorry, there's a lot of great wines on the table tonight. The Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay, also surprisingly good from this winery. Thanks again, everybody who showed up to pour and everybody who came to taste. And again, we've got these wines at the same price for you guys on this offering. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.